Fill subsidy, rising energy costs, and spiraling inflation, in addition to budget deficits, are putting enormous pressure on many African economies, necessitating calls for the removal of fill subsidy by development partners and institutional lenders. Many emerging economies are torn between removing the subsidy, which would increase the cost of living in the short term, and retaining the subsidy, which could lead to bigger budget deficits and long-term debt traps for governments. In this report, Perpetual Fashami Peter shines the spotlight on some African countries that have recently removed the subsidies from petroleum products and the aftermath. Globally, $423 billion goes into fossil fuel subsidies annually. Many countries rely on foreign loans to fund these fuel subsidies. Owing to the Russian-Ukraine war, top European economies like Germany and the United Kingdom were compelled to borrow hundreds of billions of euros to cap natural gas prices for households and businesses in 2022. In Africa, many economies like Nigeria borrow to finance fuel subsidies. Kenya also funded its petroleum subsidies with borrowed funds until September 2022, when the government scrapped them. Subsidies in Kenya have been a controversial issue, particularly with a new government. The most noticeable impact of removing subsidies was that the price of basic commodities like food and petroleum has gone up. In the hindsight, it was a good decision economically, because the rules of supply and demand will work. There will be no distortions. There has been some feeling that some people have been getting too good. They have been getting very good things that they don't deserve because of subsidies. Kenya is not the only African country to tow this path. Cameroon, Egypt and Ghana have done the same. So I think about four or so months ago, the government, through the National Petroleum Authority, uh, regulatory authority and of course with the Ministry of Energy uh, together with the industry stakeholders decided to remove a subsidy on one of the products called the uh, Residia uh, fuel oil, IRF foods. The fund that has been set up to take out these subsidies have been depleted. So there was a choice uh, whether we go against uh, availability of this IRF foods or not availability and if we are choosing that we need to make sure that we have the RFOs open then we need to find a way to pay it and for us as a government the only way now is for us to reduce our debt burden and that is to remove the subsidies while subsidy removal has its merits it is not without its challenges it's understandable that uh, the lower the, the members of the society the lowest echelons have suffered but the best way the government can come up with a balance would be to have selected subsidies so that we give subsidies to commodities or services that are most deserving. Nigeria, the largest economy in Africa, may begin a gradual removal of the petrol subsidy from April 2023, about three months ahead of the initial plan to effect a complete stop to the expenditure. We have now arrived at a stage whereby it is either you remove the subsidy or it will have severe impact because when you look at the cost of subsidy and the budget, subsidy is about um, six point something trillion. You should be spending over a minimum of six point something trillion a year for subsidy. And when you look at the budget of uh, about 21 trillion, that's a huge cost in one area. So I think it's all, uh, that's why everybody agrees that it's the best time to remove it so that the money that is devoted to subsidy can be spent in other more beneficial areas. Nigeria spends 3.3 trillion naira which is about $7.167 billion to offset subsidy payment from January to November 2022. It also plans to spend at least 3.35 trillion naira, approximately $7.275 billion on subsidy claims by the end of the second quarter of 2023 when it plans to stop the payment. Nigeria's federal government on March 15 said it has yet to harmonize efforts with states to set up palliative measures ahead of the June 2023 deadline for the discontinuation of petrol subsidy. But how difficult is it to come up with a workable plan? I think what, for me, they should be focusing on in is looking at areas where you really have impact on the poor. One major area is our transport system, whereby if you remove subsidy, you will lead to an increase in transportation. 
if you look for ways of uh, subsidizing the cost of work for those that are involved in a public transport system, I think that should be a more uh, practical area than talking about 5,000 for the poor. They also look at areas where the poor will be affected and look at how you can subsidize those that are involved. Because it's not just everybody that you enjoy it, but when you subsidize sectors that will really be affected, because when those sectors are affected, they will have a way of transferring that cost to the poor. But when they are, they, they are subsidized, I think they will, they will not transfer our cost. I think that is, for me, that is a more practical area. About 460 million people on the African continent were living below the extreme poverty line of $1.90 a day in 2022, with approximately 1.4 billion inhabitants. Roughly a third of Africa's population is in extreme poverty. Fuel subsidy removal will significantly impact poor Africans in the short term and aggravate inflation. But analysts believe the benefits, which include improving government revenues, would favor Africans and the economies in the long term. Perpetual Fasami Peter for New Central Television. And that's where we wrap things up today. You can follow us on social media at New Central TV. Download our mobile app, head to our websites, and of course, keep up with us on the platforms we are available. At 12 p.m. West African time, New Central Now gives you the latest news coming from out of the continent and beyond. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adela Rivalogun. Have a pleasant day.